um, many school districts that we work with um, as a company, um, students may live in two or three homes in the course of a semester. Um, it's very difficult for students to connect to the education process if they're worried about where they're going to sleep tonight or are they going to be safe, do they have enough to eat. So addressing some of those you know, inequities or the poverty issues is going to be key. I think the key to dealing with low performing students is to intervene early. There's a lot of research that shows that if kids have fallen behind by the time they get to school, and, and many kids have, that that's the point at which you have to take steps to solve the problem because if you, if you wait until later in the game, it's just too late. I think that we have to really reframe this at a really fundamental level, which is it's not just about low achieving learners, it's about how do we address all learners. And over the last uh, 50, 70, 90 years, um, we've really moved from an apprenticeship system um, of education where in fact students really worked one-on-one, -on -one. learners worked one-on-one -on -one with individuals to learn their trade, to really move towards more of a liberal arts education where we're really getting a very broad education. It's now time that we look back at, at some of that historical aspect and look at how do we address the needs of every learner. Every learner has areas where they have aptitudes and strengths, and every learner has areas where they have challenges. Clearly, lower performing students um, are not finding their niche. I think the other group of students that certainly everyone is concerned about as we move to more digital content and more digital learning is students that may or may not have um, access to that technology or the technology is not suitable for them because they're students who maybe learn differently. They have print disabilities or perhaps other differences in the way they learn and without addressing their needs as we move online, we're going to miss a, a big portion of our student population. And I think we can turn to some of our historical looks at education. We can look at how learners learn. We've created an infrastructure um, under NCLB to collect data. Um, the question is, how do we now, what data do we push through those pipes? And can we really address the needs of every learner? And that's really where we are. I like to think of every child helped ahead um, and look at really addressing those needs. Certainly every parent wants their child to succeed. And I think that our schools really need to reframe the problem and the solution at the same time.